In terms of uh, my role at Jupiter, actually, uh, I look at uh, sort of core platforms over here. Uh, so I look at account openings, payments, authentication, and then so eventual platformization of all these uh, pieces within the company as well. Uh, in terms of my personal background, so I studied computer science at Harvard undergrad. After I graduated, I worked for about four years in high frequency trading at a company called Tower Research Capital, um, which was based out of New York. Uh, and I moved back to India, freelance for a bit, also took a brief sabbatical from writing code uh, and worked at a restaurant because that was like a long stand standing hobby of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I started my own company, which interestingly was actually started as a neobank and then pivoted to being a mutual fund company because we realized we need a lot more money to be a neobank than we had. Uh, and then so yeah, we were a mutual fund company, uh, scaled pretty well, were in Y Combinator and then eventually got acquired by Jupiter, which is uh, how I wound up over here. Yeah, I am one of the directors of engineering here at Jupiter. I have been around for almost two years now. Uh, so I have pretty much seen the uh, entire journey of the product being built to what it is today. Um, in terms of my role, it's pretty much uh, all things engineering, I would say. So a few back end pods, uh, that is uh, experience, salary account and rewards. And apart from this, I also look at uh, the front end and the QA team as well. Yeah, so, so like I said, my startup started out as a neobank. Uh, so I've, you know, since like 2018, I would say I had a lot of conviction in neobanks and felt like banking in India was kind of broken and, uh, you know, needs to be uh, re rethought from the ground up. And so for me, it was a pretty natural fit. Like, uh, you know, the vision was very aligned with what I believe banking should be. So I have built two companies uh, before this and, uh, and then I have to take a break for some time uh, to take care of a few things at home. Uh, post that, I started exploring and uh, got introduced uh, to Jupiter. So for me, it's always been about you know solving a problem. Now, banking has perpetually been broken in India. Uh, no bank has ever been built uh, with the customer in mind. And Jupiter exactly wanted to do that. So that was it for me. And apart from that, I think uh, another important factor, you know, which kind of played an important role in my decision making, uh, was the kind of team that Jitain had put together. A bunch of uh, top class folks. So it was a no brainer to kind of join the rocket ship. Yeah, so look, I would say there's mostly pros for joining Jupiter. Mm -hmm. There are very few cons, but I would say, look, number one, I, so I started my career in fintech and I thought that was a great decision because for me in fintech, the cost of failure is really, really high. Like you're dealing with people's money, you can't afford to lose it. Uh, and so, you know, if you get it wrong, it has a real repercussion for the business. Uh, I would say much more so than any other domain. So for me, someone who joins fintech early in their career really tends to wind up being like an exceptional engineer just because the standard is is so damn high. So that's the first the first thing. And then the second thing I would say is, look, we are scaling like crazy. But then, you know, being in fintech, we also have these like requirements around like our data consistency, ensuring that we never lose data. like. And so we use a lot of the, the tools in the industry that are available to do that. Like one very simple example is like using database transactions properly and making sure that your, your DB never gets an internally inconsistent state, right? So I feel like FinTech and Jupyter in particular are a really great way, great place to learn some of those like those things as well. Um, yeah, I know. And the other thing I would say is like, we just really push ourselves very hard as a company. So, you know, we launched the product in like July of last year and it's barely March now and we're close to having like a million people who actually opened accounts with us which has just been insane scale right and that scale mm -hmm. has been enabled by uh, the our engineering team many of whom are like this is their, either their first or second job and so they've been given the opportunity to kind of scale a system up to that like uh, to that uh, volume uh, relatively early in their career and I don't think many companies give you that opportunity. So in my opinion, uh, early to mid stage, in my opinion, is like the defining period for anybody's career, you know. It defines that uh, difference between an ordinary and an extraordinary career. So uh, during that phase, you would want to be at a place where you can create impact, you know, some place where you can uh, make significant contributions. So mm -hmm. given the stage at which uh, Jupiter is as a company, I think it exactly provides that platform. In fact, uh, uh, one interesting fact is that, you know, the product that we have today, a majority of it has been built by a young team of HD1s and 2s. 
So it's a great achievement, and in my opinion, every single person on the team today should be definitely proud of that. Uh, in terms of what we've been able to uh, put out as a product, uh, so that is uh, definitely a great thing. Yeah, so there will be a little bit of pressure at times, and you need to kind of you know take ownership and responsibility of uh, things beyond your level or caliber. uh but that's the whole point like it's it's that uh you know it would take that extra bit out of you uh but that's the opportunity uh on the table and the benefits eventually are equally rewarding so why not go for it like i try to evaluate uh you know how much ownership have they taken in their previous roles how much have they really pushed beyond you know what the formal requirement or ask for them was And really taken ownership and driven the direction of whatever component uh, that they were managing. And obviously, you know, for someone who doesn't have as many years of experience, uh, you know, the kind of component that they're in charge of is normally smaller. Uh, for someone who has more years of experience, that's normally larger. But given the scope of you know what they were tasked with, how much did they go above and beyond? I would say is something that um, I'm definitely definitely looking for. Uh, and then I would say you know I look for their sort of desire to learn and. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, and kind of uh, grow in a space that might be a lot more challenging to work in. Uh, FinTech, I think, has a lot of unique challenges in the sense that, you know, we're seeing a lot of scale, but we also, you know, have a lot more requirements in both in terms of compliance, in terms of correctness, other than a lot of other companies do, right? So we can't scale with, you know, some of the tricks that uh, other companies use, like for example, like yep. having eventually consistent systems or like, you know, those kind of those kind of things don't work for us. So I think it's significantly more challenging. So I'm looking for someone who's really looking to learn and grow and like learn this the, the tools that we use in this in this particular environment to uh you know achieve the kind of scale that we have within just you know 7 months of launch effectively so i'd say that's the second uh, second most important factor right so see uh, at a very generic level i think it's just pretty simple uh i personally uh look for passion so passionate folks is what uh you know what i am always in the hunt for uh people should always be passionate in anything that they do uh, and that is exactly when the best comes out and i think the stage at which uh, jupiter is or you know the uh, the stage at which we are at this point of time we cannot settle for anything less than the best so i think uh, the most important quality on a generic level that i look for is uh, purely passion So I would say there's three types of rounds at Jupiter. So one is a coding round, which is pretty standard. It's like any other company's coding round. The standard practices apply over there. Like you know, think through the algorithm uh, before you write the solution. Uh, you know, be communicating constantly with the interviewers so that they know what you're thinking. And I would say like one important point over there on the coding interview is don't get tied up to like the optimal solution at first. Like come up with a brute force solution and then like think through how you can improve on it or where there are uh, pieces of repeated work that you're doing. I find that if you just get caught up on like the optimal solution, you sometimes don't get there without going through the brute force solution first. Hmm. That's the coding interview. And then we do design interview, which actually has two separate uh, types. So there's low level design and there's high level design. So low level design will sort of focus more on the uh, the structure of the code within a given service, I would say, or a given uh, you know, yeah, given like just the, the code structure. And then high level design will focus more on like the overall system architecture, like what are the different services involved, you know, what are the different architectural components like databases cache load balancers etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm-hmm. and again there's tons of resources uh, on how to prepare for high level design interview as well on the internet so highly recommend uh, looking at those i would say our process is not that much different than any of the other big companies like facebook google amazon right. um, yeah and then the last thing that we do is uh, what we call a bar is uh, not some companies call it like a hiring manager round mm-hmm. and this is where we have like a casual conversation with the candidate And uh, what I would say over here is we're really looking to see like a lot of depth of thinking in your previous work and like you know a lot of demonstration of ownership in your previous work because what I find is that you know for the coding round the design round you know someone can study and like learn how to do those rounds and do really well on those but there's no substitute for like real work experience right and so that's where I can really gauge uh, you know the kind of complexity of things that you worked on in the past and how much initiative you've taken. one thing like i mentioned earlier is is ownership like i want to see that you've gone above and beyond in your previous uh, organization and you know it really varies depending on your individual context right i don't expect the same two things from uh two different people because they work at different organizations it comes down to how many opportunities your organization gave you uh, you know the kind of role you were in and how much you did with the you know what was available to you at the time 
So I'll just say that there's no like one fixed answer, but I'm just looking to get a sense that uh, you know you really pushed yourself and showed a lot of initiative. And then the other thing that I personally look for in like uh, in a hiring manager round is a sort of you know an like an understanding that you really get your system really really well. That you become an expert on it. That you can explain it to me. You can draw an architecture diagram. Like you can talk about it. Like you're the service owner, even if you didn't actually own or create a lot of the service, right? Because that shows me that you can come into our organization. And really become an expert in terms of all the things that we do here uh, right now. And the third thing I'm looking for is that you can like sort of deal with conflict uh, within your organization because look, Jupiter startup, um, there are very high like sort of demands in terms of uh, you know speed of execution and uh, you know we often set impossible goals for ourselves and sometimes we pull them off, sometimes we don't, right? And so you know you'll often get asked questions on why you know why things didn't happen within the time frame and so you have to be able to like sort of deal with that and. Uh, and so for me, that's like one thing that I try to gauge for as well. Like, you know, have you dealt with conflict in the organization? Like, did you do it with a smile? Like, or did it completely like wreck you emotionally? So <laughs> that's... You know, the bar raiser round that we conduct, it's actually a constant across all positions. Doesn't matter what level, what uh, what position it is. We make sure we take the bar raiser round. So, uh, and it's, it's in my opinion, the most important round. Uh, so for any uh, candidate, you know, there are two things. One is skills and the other is intent. So all the other rounds definitely take care of, uh, you know, the the bar for the skill aspect. But in the bar racer, I think uh, we judge the intent to a great extent. Skills are something, in my opinion, that can be acquired. But intent is something which is more inherent, you know. And I personally value intent more than skill any day. Like personally, uh, when I want to get somebody on my team, I, I, I want people who, who I can go on a war with, you know, people who can figure things out, own them, deliver them end to end. Those are the kind of people I would want. And if the right intent to do that uh, is there in place, then uh, everything else can be figured out. Every skill can be acquired, learned and you can do wonders. So, in my opinion, those are the kind of people uh, we want on the team. And uh, those are the kind of things we look for in the bar racer. And I would I would never want to compromise on that aspect altogether. Um, because uh, honestly, at the end, great companies are definitely built by great people. So I think it's the most important uh, thing to uh, for a person to have. I think when someone joins for the first time, the first thing I do is kind of try and figure out what stack have they worked with and how much of a gap is there between uh, the stack that they worked on and what we're doing over here. And then, uh, you know, I'll send them a bunch of reading materials and like resources for getting familiarized with our stack. And then we also have some resources in terms of like training videos on uh, the, the code layout of the services that we run as a team. And so we'll send them those as well so they can kind of get familiarized, at least with the high level like code structure of the various repos that they're going to be working on. So that's the first step. And then sort of once they've you know done all of that, uh, then uh, we'll assign them some very small tasks, which would maybe uh, require an understanding of maybe just like one small component within the code base versus like an understanding of an entire service. Uh, and you know, they'll work for a couple of weeks on these small tasks just so that they can get like really familiar with the code base without having a lot of stress uh, in that there's like this massive thing that they have to learn before they can deliver the project. Yeah. And then sort of once they've done that, then we start giving them like entire features. Uh, to work on which might touch multiple parts of a single service and i would say like you know once it's been like a few months and they've been doing this that's when you know they can uh, consider either writing a new service or uh, you know taking over ownership of a, of a service that's being used in production but i would say it's like about you know three to six months ramp up uh, before that happens and that the speed it really depends on like the, the person the individual so uh, see at jupiter i think we invest in people we are here for the long game. Uh, it's not about getting people to come in, build things and get done. Uh, it's it's not about that at all. Uh, we want to build a team, you know, that people would die to be a part of. Uh, it would be a dream to kind of see folks from the team do great things in future. Uh, in fact, we already have four startups, you know, by folks who, who've come out of Jupiter. So that's, that's a great achievement uh, in my opinion. Uh, there have already been a few great growth stories uh, already uh, and one thing I would like to put out you know that people who have shown intent to grow have grown much faster than they would have uh, in uh, in any other org or any other place 
Uh, so opportunities are there in abundance. Uh, you ask for it, it's there. Uh, it's it's all about you know you taking it up, proving yourself, and growing. It's it's as simple as that. 